what is debt recycling strategy? So what is debt recycling? Basically, the easiest way to understand it is you have an unoccupied debt, okay? So for example, you purchase a home, okay? You purchase a home and that comes with an unoccupied debt, right? So, so if, for example, you got a $500,000 unoccupied debt. Now, over the years, you paid it down. You paid it down, so for example, it's only $300,000 now, okay? So, over a few years, you keep paying it down, paying it down, and now, you know, the, the outstanding unoccupied loan is only $300,000. And what happens is, what you can do essentially is you can tell the bank to say, I want to redraw some of those things, some of those that uh, you pay down. Draw back out as equity and use that equity to invest. So in this example, let's say we, for example, you know, you want to take out that $200,000 from the bank. Okay. So you've asked for an equity loan and once approved, they'll give you $200,000 and that $200,000, you can use it for investing in shares, uh, properties, etc, etc. Whatever you like, okay? Now, this part, $300,000, that is, because it's for unoccupied purposes, it's not tax deductible. Whereas, this part, the $200,000, once you draw it back out, and you tell the, the bank the purpose of that loan is for investment. In other words, you use that $200,000 equity to, for investment purposes, then you will be able to claim tax on it, and therefore, this one will be tax deductible. So that's the concept of um, debt recycling, is basically turning a non-tax deductible debt, in this case, originally that $200,000 isn't tax deductible, into tax deductible debt. And that is going to be able to help you um, create wealth at the same time as you continue to pay down the own occupy loan. And that's why it's so powerful for property investors. Okay, so now that we've covered debt recycling in a nutshell and give you a bit of idea on how it works, let's talk about the pros and cons of debt recycling strategy. So the pros, let's start off with the pros I say. Um, the pros of using the debt recycling strategy, in my opinion, is twofold. One, it allows you to be able to continue to build your property portfolio while you pay down the own occupied debt. Okay, so traditionally, what happens is people usually pay down their own occupied debt until it's all been paid off fully. Then that's when they actually look at starting to create their wealth um, or you know purchase investment property to build some wealth on top of it. So the good news is you don't have to. To do, you don't have to wait until your own occupied debt is completely paid off in order to start building your property portfolio. You can actually, once you pay down some of the own occupied debt, then um, draw that back out as equity and use that equity to start investing. So, you know, it basically gets you on an accelerated wealth creation um, a lot faster than the traditional approach. And the second pro uh, of using debt recycling strategy is related to tax. So the only occupied debt traditionally is not tax deductible. And therefore, um, you know, that's why you want to be able to pay that down as quickly as you can. But as soon as you pay down some of the own occupied debt and you draw back out, um, as long as the purpose of that uh, equity loan is for investment, then the interest that's incurred on that loan will be tax deductible. When you're purchasing your property and building out your property portfolio, that's why you can also claim negative gearing on it um, and uh, obviously it helps from taxation perspective, okay? So I'm not a qualified accountant, so I do have to say that um, please seek specific advice with your tax accountant about uh, debt recycling strategy and what can be claimed uh, as tax and what cannot be claimed as tax deductible. Okay, but those are the two pros of using the debt recycling strategy. So now that we've covered the pros of debt recycling strategy, I also want to talk a little bit about the cons of debt recycling strategy. So the biggest drawback of using the debt recycling strategy is that essentially you're leveraging back up to the original debt level. 
So as I said, originally the debt, for example, is $500,000. You've worked hard, you've saved up, you've paid down to $300,000, and now you've drawn the equity out, which is borrowing again. Don't forget, equity is borrowing. So you're topping up the loan back to, say, $500,000 again. So anything on that extra portion, again, you'll need to pay interest on it. Okay, so that's going to have an impact on your cash flow um, because obviously that's an extra part of loan that you've taken out. Initially, is if the equity money is sitting in the offset account linked to that equity loan, then assuming the repayment is IO or interest only, you basically pay nothing, okay? But on, once you use that equity, say for example, as deposit for the next property, then at that point in time, you also need to factor in, you need to pay the interest on that extra borrow portion. Okay, so just need to be mindful of that. Second thing, the um, when you use that equity as deposit to purchase the next property, you're essentially leveraging, you know, you're basically borrowing up to about 100%, or if you're adding a stamp duty, close to 105% of the property value. Because don't forget, you know, the equities borrow money and you're borrowing the 80% of the LVR to complete the transaction, right? So adding both components together, let's say, for example, 20% deposit you're going to put in, that comes out from equity money, 5% of stamp duty and all the purchase costs, again, that comes out from equity. So that's 25% on here that you take out from equity and you borrow 80% from another bank in order to complete the transaction, that totals to 105%. Of borrowing okay so when you do the cash flow analysis for example you shouldn't be doing cash flow analysis just based on 80% borrowing you need to do it on 105% of the property value in order to give you that accurate reflection and chances are it's probably going to be negatively geared okay so be careful about your due diligence here because if you use 80% sure it might look like neutral before tax but you know, when you actually put in 105% of the property value, all of a sudden, the monthly cash flow may not look as great. So you just need to make sure that you use the correct value in order to give you the true picture of holding costs of the property. And therefore, that's not going to be a shock <laughs> when, the, um, when the bill comes, okay? So, all right, so that's all I want to cover today on debt recycling strategy. I hope it gives you guys an overview of how this strategy can actually help you uh, while paying down your own occupied debt and also be able to build wealth um, at the same time. So if you got any questions, uh, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to like our video if you find it's helpful. Send it to a friend you know, who is looking into investing in property, for example, that always helps. And uh, subscribe to our channel. Um, there will be more exciting content that's coming up later this year. So don't forget to click the subscribe button. And uh, until next time, I uh, will see you again in another episode of Invest Power Series.